Yes, sir. Amen. For our feasting time, our text will be the book of Esther, chapter 2. Esther, chapter 2. Begin reading at verse 15. Esther chapter 2 beginning at verse 15 there's a word for us all here that's in the Old Testament now <coughs> Esther chapter 2 beginning at verse 15 Amen. and I want to encourage you to bring your Bible every time you come to church Amen. bring your Bible somebody says uh, you may not know all of it but if a child pull up a 38 you don't know whether he can shoot it right or not you dodge don't you <laughs> So when you got your soul with you, the Bible, the devil recognizes that. And it reads, Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of uh, Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, mm -hmm. who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king she required nothing but what Haggai the king Chamberlain the keeper of the women appointed and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her so Esther was taken unto king Ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month which is the month Tibet in the seventh year of his range and the king loved Esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vesita. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Now you want to read on through verse 20 in your spare time. I've chosen in, with, with the Lord's approval to talk to you about trust in God's righteousness. Trust in God's righteousness. Would you say that with me? Trust in God's righteousness. Look over at your neighbor and ask your neighbor this question. Are you, Are you trusting, trusting God's, God's righteousness? righteousness. The background of this message starts in chapter 1. In chapter 1 where the king Ahasuerus who was very wealthy who thought a lot of his employees people who worked in his 27 provinces and he had 27 princes wanted these provinces and so Ahasuerus uh, was showing off and he wanted everybody to see 
as some might call his exceptional beautiful wife. And so when he had put this feast on, this time of celebration, to recognize them and to give them something, the queen would not come. The queen says, no, I'm not coming. To the feast that he put on. And he let him down because he wanted to show all of his audience his beautiful wife. How good she looked. How fine she was. Her looks, how she was built. Uh, according to the scripture, she was a she was a pretty woman. But she wouldn't come. And then the, the princess of the providences says to the king Ahasuerus, this is not good because if the queen won't respect you, and honor you and respect your call for her, it's going to influence people in the provinces. Well. It's going to call wives to be negative and disrespectful toward their husbands. Yeah. It's a bad example. Yeah. Yes, that's what they said to the king. As you read chapter 1, it's a king, we got to do something about this. Well, they're really saying, I don't want no problem with my wife. Now, she respects me as the leader, the man in the house. But if the queen can get away with this, they may say, since the queen has done it, we can do it too. <laughs> So, King, you got to do something about this. He said, well, okay then, you got to do something. And he was a little hot with, with the queen. And uh, because she didn't show up. And uh, at his call. And so he decided that he was going to select him some, some young women, some virgins out of the provinces and and then gives them some time to purify themselves they was virgins and with myrrh and uh, sweet smelling uh, perfume colognes and, and uh, six months with one with myrrh and uh, six months with the other they were going to have to you know, take care of their bodies and beautify themselves. It was a whole year. And uh, when the time came, he was going to let them come before him and he was going to look at them. Once he looked at them, and uh, if he didn't invite them back, that means he had no interest in them. If he didn't call their name, he didn't have no interest in them. And so it came about that Esther was a, among them women. But Mordecai, who was her cousin, and Mordecai, after Esther's father died, took her in as with a girl, took her in just like she was his daughter you saw in the text and raised her and taught her and guided her so that she wouldn't mess up her life because he knew providence would at work and providence God's providence works to prepare people for his favor that's why you can't afford to get into any and everything 
Because what's done in the dark will come back up. Is that right? You can ask some of the TV stars who, men who won awards, but when they found out certain things about them, uh, amen, they took it from them. And so, so Esther was among these women. And I, I'm just moving right along. And I, I want to say to, to all of us, it pays to be righteous in God. Mordecai was a believer. Her cousin was a believer, but he was a senior to Esther, and he taught H Esther the right way. How to live. How to carry herself. So she ended up among those women, and uh, the king looked at her. And here we, here we are. The king looked at her. Verse 15. And when the turn of who? Esther. The daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai. When that time came, and for her to go before the king, she required nothing. She, she really just, she wasn't, uh, you know, expensive. She wasn't require no extra or nothing but she yielded to the chamberlain of the uh, of the charge of women he had certain individuals in charge of women in charge of them and they would they were treated mighty nice now whom he had appointed but when she came before the king Ahasuerus when she came before the king the Bible says in the latter part of verse 15, the B section, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all of them that looked upon her. Did you hear me? Esther had some going for her. She was pretty too now. Not only the king, the Bible said, but all that looked upon her. Because there was a quality on the inside. And let me tell all of you, whether you're a man or a woman, keep in mind that your best quality in life, your best value of life is the inner person. How you look on the inside is what really matters. Because what's on the inside is going to come out. You can decorate your body all you want. Nothing wrong with making these, these uh, bodies look good. That's all right. But be sure you work on the inside. Because I, I told them somewhere, you, you can take a, a, a pig, clean them up, wash them up, Put ribbon on his tail and bowls on him, perfume him, put him in a contest with other pigs. As soon as he come out of the contest, you turn him loose. His nature said, "Let's go back to the mood." <laughs> It's, on, it's what's on the inside that matters. Somebody ought to hear me. <laughs> Esther had a high quality in her. And women, you, you, you value the principles of life. Value high quality. Keep yourself clean morally. Because God has his eye on you. Don't use your body to get a man. As soon as you get tired of your body, he'll find another one. Somebody ought to say amen, amen. But the Bible says, she again, 
Elsa obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. People ought to know you're different from just the normal crowd. Amen. You don't run with the chickens. You fly like an eagle. <laughs> you don't peck like in the, in the barnyard with barnyard chicks. You soar to the mountains. And you look down on the rest of them. Because you know who you are. But if you don't know who you are, you'll start picking with the chickens. In the barnyard. And you think that's all it is to life. But the Bible says God honors righteousness. Yes. Remember, providence is that worked. King or the queen, Vesetai, she, she wouldn't respect the king, but God's providence is that work. Because what God is doing is working with Mordecai to get Esther ready to become queen. You never know what God has in mind for you. You never know the position he has for you in life. If you're a single woman, you never know the man he has waiting on you. You, you just don't know. But he's watching you to see, amen, of the, see the quality that's in your life. He's not going to give you one of his best and then you one of the worst. He's going to give one of his best to one of his best. Amen. He's not going to give you somebody and then you find out later, I, boy, I should have left that joker where he was. <laughs> A man told me just, just the other day, he and his wife been married for a long time. <laughs> She got, got a little bitter with him and said, it, it was kind of harsh and out of me when he told me. She, she says, when I married you, I messed my life up. <laughs> now, I don't know how I would have took that. I don't That's an opportunity to say, well, maybe who you had in mind while you were thinking about me, go to him then. <laughs> Don't treat me like I'm second class. <laughs> Can anybody say amen? amen? God looks at your life. I'm not condemning nobody. All of us have done wrong in the past. Amen. As pastor of this church, I'm trying to help everybody I can to learn how to do things God's way. Because God's way will bring you out. Do you believe it? And so Esther had a high quality on the inside. She not only looked good on the outside, but she had high quality inside because she listened to her cousin. It don't make no difference who it is. If somebody being nice to you, you better respect them. And that's, 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 that's my first point. You have to learn to respect folk that have you at heart. Some people treat others that care for them like they're their enemies. But when people respect you enough to try to help you, you ought to appreciate it. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to tell all of the young folk, amen, keep that in mind, amen. I know you may be a teenager now, but keep in mind you're not grown. You're still in, in the transitional period. You, you're moving forward. You're moving forward day by day, amen. And the more you move forward, the more you're going to discover about yourself. And the more you're going to need help with yourself. Y'all better say amen. amen. So I encourage you young, young men, young ladies, uh, have a high quality of life. Let righteousness be in you. And you can be right and not be righteous. 
Did you hear me? But you can't be righteous and not be right. But you can be right about matters and not be a righteous person. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Esther heard Mordecai. Some folks don't want to listen to nobody. Well, that's my cub. I came up with him. No, if he right, listen to him. Whoever it is, if they're telling you what's right, do right. Now, come, come on, go, God, I'm going to take you to another scripture. You know I'm bad at that. Pro Proverbs. Brothers and sisters, I love you. That's why I'm preaching and teaching the word of God, because I want you to enjoy the blessing of your birthright. I tell, I tell them somebody this morning, man, you have a birthright. As a believer in Jesus Christ, and you can miss out on your birthright privileges. Just because you're saved don't mean you're going to automatically enjoy life. You enjoy life the way God wants you to enjoy when you obey his word. When you respect him. When you respect others that he put in charge to tell you what's right. Daughters, listen to your mama. Sons, listen to your daddy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't, don't get beside yourself. Well, I'm a teenager now. I'm grown. No way. You still need some guidance. Amen. And everyone that takes his or her own way, they're going to go down the hill. Because God frowns on any child that disrespects his parents. Any child. He disrespects that. He frowns on that. And they won't be prosperable the way he wanted them to be prosperable because of their sin. It's a sin not to respect your mom and daddy. Yes, it is. Be righteous. Proverbs 14, 34 and 35. Esther had something going for her. Because, again, she obeyed Mordecai. That's in the text. She respected Mordecai. Sometimes people, because of uh, kin folk, they don't want to have nothing. They want to have nothing they got to say. Amen. Like Jesus, uh, people in his day and time, that, that's Mary's boy. Amen. But Mary's boy was the savior of the world. Amen. We, we, we know him, his father, Joseph, but the earthly father, he's a carpenter. We know all about them. But that didn't mean, amen, they didn't need the savior. Amen. They turned Jesus down, many of them, because they knew that Joseph was just a carpenter and Mary was just like a housekeeper or so. Common people. To them, they didn't mean very much. But Jesus was the savior of the world. Esther had something going for her. Look here. And this scripture bears it out. Proverbs 14, 34, 35. This is what it says. For righteousness... Does what? But sin to any people. Did you hear that? When you are righteous, righteousness will exalt you, mean that he will lift you up. Righteousness will cause promotion to come your way. Righteousness will call people to pay you attention that, amen, that you didn't think would pay you some attention. Because of the quality that's on the inside. Look at verse 35. Here it is. You hear Esther here. The king's favor is toward the wise servant. But his wrath is against him that causes shame. Can you say amen? amen. amen. Now we are made righteous through Jesus Christ. Well, thank you. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 21. 
Jesus did a lot for you so that you could become righteous with God. I appreciate it. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. Yes ma'am. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Who knew no sin. A sinner couldn't die for a sinner. He's just been two sinners dead. But Jesus was made sin for us so he could pay our sin debt. But in him was no no sin. For what purpose? He said, look at that B section. That we might, that you, that we might be made what? Righteousness, Righteousness of God in him. <clears throat> if you want to Righteousness in your life You got to have the son of God Again just being right Is not good enough You got to become righteous And the only way to become righteous Is except the righteous one Amen. The righteous one Who is Jesus Christ The only begotten son of God almighty Whom God gave And he gave his life And, and went to Calvary and died for our sins Buried in the grave Stayed there three days and three nights And right early the third day morning Got out of the grave And said all power of heaven and earth is in my hand He has the keys of, the keys of life and death in his hand so you have to respect those that God put in place for you. Are you glad that God put certain people in your pathway? Oh boy. God put certain people in your pathway so that he can do for you what he want done. Because he know you need some help to get ready to be able to do what he wants you to do. Therefore, therefore, it pays you to listen, to respect, because God speaks to you with other people. Don't believe that song that says, I got Jesus, I don't need nobody else. You need other people. God has people in place for you. And some people brag on that and boast on it and get loud with it. I got Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Don't would you believe that? Because God uses people to do his will. He uses people to bring you the message. Act, 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 act Paul, amen. Paul says, he told me on the Damascus road, go on down to Damascus, get on the street, call straight, and there's a man by the name of Adonai who's going to tell you what you must do. God could have told him himself, but he had somebody in, in his pathway to tell him what he wanted him to do. Some people get so stubborn willed. Selfishness and selfish and self centered. Headed, they don't want nobody to tell them nothing. Nobody. I don't care what that preacher say. I'm going to live my life the way I want to live it. Amen. Don't you be one of them. Because if you live it the way you wanted to live it, amen, you know what's going to happen. In case you don't know, I'm going to tell you, you're going to go to hell. Amen. I hear Jesus say in John 14 and 6, I am the way. Yeah. The truth and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. So your way and my way won't work. That's why we needed a Savior. Because our ways was infested with sin. But thank God for Jesus Christ. John 1 and 12 says, As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Or children of God. So, first of all, we got to learn from Esther. She respected Mordecai. Respect people that God has put in your pathway to help you to get where he wants you to be. If you turn them down, you're going to turn down some opportunities. Don't get up at it. 
And sometimes God will use people that have not nearly the education you may have. And some people take the attitude, well, you know, he didn't go as far as I did in school. What are he going to tell me? It's not what you learn in school so much that matter. When it comes to your soul, it's what you learn from God. Amen. Somebody ought to shout out. Give that another hand if you will. I appreciate the two or three. It's what you learn from God. Amen. That matters. No degree is going to take you to heaven. Get all of them you can. Thank God for them because they'll open doors for you while you're living on the earth. They'll pay you according to your degree. They'll pay you according to your degree. You got a certain degree, you go to certain areas and, and apply for a job, they look at your resume. You got certain training, amen. If the opening is there for you, they'll give you a chance. But if you just came out of high school and it requires a two-year uh, college or four-year or five-year, you're not going to get the job. No matter how much you know in your head. And there are some folk can serve just as well as some folk in certain areas and don't have all of that. Amen. They have just some good common God sense. Amen. Amen. And that's something the world can't give you. But there are some people who haven't gone in front of other school, but they're just as smart as a whip, man. Just, they have so much wisdom, they can tell you some stuff you never heard of, man. And help you along the way. So it pays to respect those that God put in your pathway. Can I say, can I get an Amen. amen. Elsa had righteousness in her. She had a high quality. She respected Mordecai. Here's something you got to obey. Second one is obey. You got to obey. Now I'm skipping down. Let's look at verse 20. I'm going to show you something. You got to obey. The Bible says Elsa had not yet showed her kindred nor her people. She hadn't told them about what had happened to her. There's some things you can't tell people Amen. for a while. Because some folk will get jealous of you. Amen. Folk that have been speaking to you all along the way and visiting, talking with you, if you tell them about such a certain accomplishment you have made or you, or you got some money, once they try and can't get none out of you, then they'll turn on you then. So that's something you just can't afford to reveal to folk. Folk can seem to have the best of friends and then when they can't do what their friend want them to do, they'll turn on them. I've seen that. And the, the Bible said, look at verse 20. I'm going to show you that. Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people as, as Mordecai had charged her. He had told her, don't tell it yet. She obeyed Mordecai. For Esther, do you see it here? For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai. Black ass when she was brought up with him. In other words, he taught her when she was growing up. And as she grew up, she didn't forget what he taught her. Don't you forget what you've been taught that's right to do. And don't believe, folk. you know, somebody told me once, well, you know, an old lady told me this. Man, old ladies can be wrong too, man. Age don't make you right. Age don't make you righteous. It's Jesus that makes you righteous. Can anybody say amen? It's Jesus. 
So Esther, the Bible tells us, I'm, I'm coming on in it. I'm coming on to this now. So they looked upon her with favor. So Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. He'd been in king for seven years. And now he's getting him a new king. That's in, that's in verse 16. Another queen. Because Vesetai, the first queen, wouldn't recognize him, wouldn't honor him. But providence will at work. God is looking out for you. I said, God is looking out for you. Doors that may have been shut in your face a long time, God can open them doors. And I believe this morning, amen, if you hear and believe what I'm telling you, the, your door is about to open up. Amen. But you're going to have to respect those God has put in your pathway to help you. You've got to obey those that God put in your pathway and follow their directions. Don't think you know it all because you know what you know. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm moving to the benefit now. That's my third point. You got the first one. You got to respect. You got to obey. And the third one, you you can reap the benefits. Look at verse 17. Now keep in mind here uh, that else is not committing sin by going into the king's house. So well, I didn't hear no ceremony in those days. The custom was if the king accepted you and turned you in that was marriage in those days that was marriage in those days and he because he had many wives <coughs> which is not God's way you, you can't have many wives at the same time <laughs> no no can't do that so well well I got one on the other side of town. <laughs> and the one on this side don't know about it, so I just run over there every now and then. <laughs> man, man, it, it's been difficult for me to take care of one. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. And these days, some of them just fooling themselves. <laughs> some of them just fooling themselves. In their mind, make themselves think, I still can do all of this. And <laughs> come on, come on. Just, just in their mind. And you don't have to be old as I am to discover that. Amen, Pastor. One sister's confided in me who's not a member here but in another area. Her husband has a business and he's doing pretty good. And and now his age. She says, she says, Reverend, he getting he looking at them young sisters. <laughs> you know what she told me? He ain't doing nothing but fooling himself. <laughs> Well, she's saying, because I know him. I'm with him. <laughs> now, he ain't doing no fooling himself. He, she ain't doing nothing but getting his money, she said. <laughs> I wish some folk like to be fooled. Tell, I'll tell anybody. I'm, I'm moving on. I'm going to close this. I'll tell anybody. As you grow older, as you grow older, you change this. Amen. Except where you, where you are. And, and don't try to do a lot of extra stuff. <laughs> now, now, a little help ain't going to bother nobody, but you go too far. Yeah. 
and uh, take you out of here. Amen. I had a professor that was teaching me once, and it was sad. And because uh, they found him with the person. He had a heart attack. <laughs> That's sad and embarrassing. <laughs> man, except, no, I don't want to make it like I'm talking about the men, amen, but you, all of us have to accept where we are. Because life is more about than a lot of other stuff we've been doing. I'm going to leave that alone now. <laughs> You can live long and you'll be happier. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, I, I didn't say that. So it's queen to do what you can to be happy. <laughs> I, I did not say that. She says that. I just repeat it. But it is the truth. <laughs> here, 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 here's the benefits. You look at you look at Esther. Again, life is about more than some other thing. Amen. Some other activities. Life is more about Amen. Being having a good relationship and loving the person and and uh, having a good fellowship time. Happy with the person. Elsa, <laughs> <Woo>. Elsa. <laughs> I'm back to Elsa. <laughs> Looking at verse 17. When you have a high quality on the inside of you, women or men, the Bible said, I'm talking in particular to women now. You young ladies, don't don't put yourself out. Amen. Don't don't put yourself out where others will just feel like you just anybody. Anybody can get you. Have you some principle you stand on? Hold up your life in the Lord Jesus Christ, and God will look at you at the same time. And the king loved Esther, the Bible said, above all the other women. Now you see what this is going to now, don't you? And she obtained grace and favor in his sight. Now the others, all of them saw her, didn't they? That she was a knife, but, but here it's boiled down to the king. The Bible said that was grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So all of them were virgins. No matter who you are, God knows what he wants for you. He said, so that he set, look at it now, he, so that he set the royal crown upon her head. Is that right? Do you know what that means? Do you know what that meant then? Esther was queen. Mordecai's cousin now who, who just didn't come up through the ranks but just, just a common girl but had high quality in her life yeah. kept her life clean and the Lord looked upon her and the Bible saw that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of versatile in other words he fired versatile his own wife Oh, you, you may be in the kingdom, but you're not going to be queen. Hit the road, Jack. Hit the road, Jack. He didn't, and with his action, he wouldn't tell her, don't come back. He was saying, you are not coming back. 
listen, elevation is in God's and promotion is in God's hand. If you keep your life clean, God has a blessing for you. And what's for you is for you. What's for you, the world can't take it away. I'm getting out of here. Keep your life clean. No matter what the devil be dangling before you, you keep on going. Amen. Until you hear God say, this is the one. You hear God saying, this is the way. Don't listen to yourself. Because you can get carried away with looks. You can get carried away with her. She's so pretty. <laughs> Jezebel was pretty too. <laughs> She was a devil in her heart. Amen. I'm not calling nobody a devil now. Don't go back and tell them that. The pastor called some of them folk devils that I didn't do that. I'm just telling you about Delilah. Don't be like Delilah. Amen. God honors a high quality life. Can I call me one witness? You can see you can see what he did for Esther, don't you? He promoted her. God's providence was way, preparing her with Mordecai, getting her ready to become queen. But then there is Ruth. Yes, sir. You, you know your sister Ruth? Yes, sir. Ruth had a husband, but then she kept her life clean. And one day she was out working in the field just like a good common girl and she was very industrious and uh, working in the field and, and she was working in a rich man's field. Yes, and he come through riding on his horse and looked out and saw her. The quality. And he says, uh, who is that? <laughs> now there were other working out of the way, but who is that? Listen, who, who, who is that? Man, man, I lack her, man. I tell you, who would I tell you? I tell you what you all do now. No, you ain't got to tell her. But when you're gleaning in the field, drop some extra. <laughs> don't don't pick up everything. He, he said deliberately when you pick it, just drop some. And, and then she she gathered her, 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 her sack full, went back and and never wonder how you get it so quick. The Lord prepared it. She didn't have to pick it. All she had to do was pick it up. <laughs> there are some ways God has for you. All you got to do is pick it up. You don't have to use a lot of muscles and a lot of mind. Pray. Let's go pick it up. Our God is an awesome God. He's an awesome God. Quiet getting ready to sing.